welcome to That Was The Week 2021. Uh, this is issue number 11 of this year's newsletter. And um, unusually, we are without Andrew Keane, who is moving house <clears throat> and not available. So I thought, you know what? Even though I hate looking in a camera and speaking directly, let's give it a shot. So that's what we're going to do. This week's uh, newsletter was kind of interesting for me, at least. Uh, what, for those of you who don't know, what I do is I, I, uh, I read every day, and as I'm reading, um, I save articles that I think are interesting. And I really do it, you know, in real time. Uh, every time I save an article, it gets posted uh, in two places, to my Telegram, which is t.me slash that was the week, and to my Twitter, which is twitter.com slash ktir. And um, I don't really look at, at, uh, at what I read in a, in a stand-back way until a Thursday evening. But this week, um, I was struck by Y Combinator's demo day uh, when Jeff Ralston wrote a, a, a long and thoughtful piece explaining why there were more than 300 companies presenting at Y Combinator in this batch. And I was, I was kind of surprised, because that's a big number, and um, as I started to look over the next couple of days at the reporting coming out of the demo day, it was clear that most of the startups weren't given a whole lot of time. And so I designed a, a front page for that was the week, way early, earlier than I normally do. Um, uh, I'll show you that page now. And I, I kind of put it on one side, and uh, that was Tuesday. Um, and I don't normally go and look at all the things I've saved until Thursday when I when I put the newsletter together using review and uh, by the way review is a great tool because it brings in all my all my tweets uh, everything I read in Feedly and anything I saved using a bookmark in Chrome and it's all there in a, in a column and I can decide what to put in the newsletter what not and I thought I was going to write a newsletter critical of Y Combinator but when I looked on Thursday at what was, uh, what was in my reading, it, it, was, it was very stark that there was a whole lot of optimistic, positive things and almost no um, um, uh, you know, filter on that. Uh, let me start that again. There was a whole lot of optimistic, positive things. And at the same time, there were... Um, lots of pieces, mainly from the mainstream media, places like the Financial Times, Wired actually, that were, that were knocking uh, the optimists for being delusional or were criticizing them for being less than clear. And so I, as, I, as I looked at that, I thought, there's no way I want to uh, write a newsletter critical of Y Combinator, because even if I am critical, and I think there may be better ways of doing startup acceleration incubating. Um, I really don't want to be in that group of people pointing fingers and scorn at those who are trying to make things better. So I completely redesigned the front page. And so this week's That Was The Week now looks like this. Do you believe in magic? And do you believe in magic, uh, it struck me, is the right question for anybody involved in innovation for the simple reason that uh, no matter what you're doing, um, if it doesn't exist yet, it will look improbable to those looking on. And this week's newsletter is all about that. Uh, I divide it into the believers and the unbelievers. And in the believers section, we've got a whole bunch of articles. Firstly, we've got Jeff Ralston talking about how to curate 300 startups from a much bigger applicant pool, by the way, uh, and how he's going to plan to scale Y Combinator. We have um, Nick Grossman from Unisquare Ventures talking about Bitcoin as a battery. And this is obviously the opposite of what you normally think of Bitcoin as. Bitcoin is often thought of as an energy drain. Uh, Nick. Uh, writes a very convincing article that Bitcoin is an energy store, that when uh, energy is used to produce Bitcoin, the Bitcoin it produces is worth more than the energy that it costs to produce it. 
and that therefore it is storing value just like a battery stores energy. It's converting energy into value and he talks a lot about other things that have similar characteristics and I just thought that's a, an amazingly uh, insightful take on, on the discussion about Bitcoin and global warming and energy consumption. Um, then uh, F. Williams, who, um, as you all know, runs uh, Medium, uh, did a couple of things. Firstly, he, he reorganized Medium to reduce, if not eradicate, its editorial team and made the case that from now onwards, uh, Medium is going to become a platform for writers which is quite similar to what uh, Ben Thompson at Stratechery said is the case with, um, with Substack, that it's a platform for writers. Um, uh, and in, in doing that, um, you know, firstly, Ev was being incredibly brave because this is probably the third pivot that Medium has done after raising over $130 million of, of venture capital, most recently uh, only five years ago, mind you. I think it, uh, it's been self-funded since then. Um, so it was brave because it represents a, another change. And it's a change that reflects what's happening in, uh, in newsletter land uh, on Clubhouse, which is the move to a creator economy, which is incomplete, partial, and may never be complete. But certainly we can see evidence of it all around us. In fact, that was the week. And the podcast and, and this video blog that I do <clears throat> is an example of it, although uh, I don't seek, I don't do it mainly to get paid. Feel free to pay the $9 a month if you, if you want to uh, support it, but that isn't why I do it. I do it uh, because it makes me think uh, and it makes me engage with what's going on and hopefully keeps me relevant for what I really do, which is working with startup founders on making their startups um, relevant to the investor community. So medium, uh, mediums changes. And then there's a whole bunch of articles about NFTs. Um, the first one is about OpenSea, uh, SEA, uh, raising $23 million from a bunch of well-known um, investors. Now, the second is that a digital home, a virtual digital home sold for half a million dollars as an NFT. And then both Chamath uh, Palihapitiya and Mark Cuban um, uh, said positive things about NFTs in the case of Cuban that he's going to build an art gallery hosting digital art that will be available for sale using NFTs. Um, after that, uh, Fidelity announced that it is uh, wanting to do uh, an exchange traded fund, an ETF, solely for Bitcoin. And that's um, obviously one of the world's biggest asset managers. Uh, piling into the, the the interest that there currently is in Bitcoin shortly after Morgan Stanley had announced a couple of weeks ago that it was going to allow its high net worth clients to buy Bitcoin. Um, Microsoft rolled out a new Bitcoin powered identity platform. So these are all people making bets on the future. Um, on the other side, uh, the Financial Times had an article talking about the delusions of techno-futurists and particularly focused on Sam Altman for the article we featured in last week's newsletter. Um, Sam Altman had um, uh, argued that uh, automation is coming due to AI and that will lead to uh, less jobs, less paid employment. And as there is less paid employment, society, if it taxes capital, will be able to spend more and more money um, allowing people to survive even if they are not employed. Basically universal basic income driven by innovation and productivity. So that's delusional according to the Financial Times. The Verge had an article titled The Mess at Medium. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, uncharacteristically, um, or maybe not these days, um, begged Congress to regulate Facebook and made some proposals about changing Article 230 of the, uh, of the Decency Act, of the Communications Decency Act. So basically somebody running a social media 
begging to be regulated, which is kind of symbolic of a loss of confidence in his own ability to make the right decisions. Um, you know, definitely not good. Um, and then there was some uh, there was some backlash against Slack. Slack has announced that it's going to allow direct messaging between um, Slack domains. That is to say, um, you can message me on Slack if you're on Slack and I'm on Slack, even if we're in different organizations. Um, there was a lot of pushback against that. And, um, and, and so that is kind of the core of this week's newsletter. There's the, 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 the believers, if you like, and uh, the non-believers. Um, so, you know, my take, and, and, and um, you know, if Andrew was on the show, I'm sure he'd disagree with me, right, Andrew? Uh, my take is that um, Thomas Roosevelt was right when he, in his very famous speech, said that, um, and I'll quote, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms and great devotions? Who spends himself in a worthy cause? Who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement? And who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly? So that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory or defeat. That, it seems to me, is, uh, is the right sentiment uh, and that led me to write the editorially, uh, editorial this week, and it also led me to completely change my plan. Now, you know, to be specific, on Y Combinator, um, and this is my job, I, I, I believe that, um, you know, new founders of potentially exciting startups um, are not served well by taking $150,000 from Y Combinator and giving up, let's say, somewhere like 7% of their company, it can be more, um, uh, for what they get in return. It, it doesn't seem a good bargain to me. Um, uh, but so what? Y Combinator has 300 startup founders who got to present to investors who got to think through their vision to perfect their story and feel part of something bigger than they were before. So my uh, little disagreement really is, is irrelevant. What's relevant is that Y Combinator is doing things to make the world better. And uh, I, for one, uh, almost stumbled across the line that made me point fingers. I hope I don't do it again. Thanks for reading this week's newsletter, and I hope you uh, don't mind it being a one-man show on the video this week. That's it for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>